In this video, I will be demonstrating the European 6-in-1 chainmail weave. What you will need for this weave is a jig. Mine has a wire on it so that I can have my rings held up here while I'm working on them. You will need a set of pliers, or two sets to make that. I'm using my larger pair um, that I got off ringlord.com. And I'm using, or you will need some rings, which I'm using a 7 16 inch uh, 16 gauge aluminum ring. And this size of ring is what I have found to be the best size for this um, weave. So, to start off with, we'll want to take some rings and close them. Now I suggest doing seven of these rings so that you have a good starting point. It's not too many to do, but you'll still get the hang of it. All right, now that you have your seven rings, you wanna take them and put all of them onto your wire. And these rings will act as the base for which you will do all your uh, chain mailing. I guess you can call it. I'll get this fastened on there so it's not hanging loose. And now we have seven rings up here ready to be worked on. So next You'll take a ring, open it up, and put it through the first two rings. Like so. Now it hangs there like that. Your second ring to make this a six in one pattern, you have to have three rings together under one loop. I'm not exactly sure why they call it a six in one whenever there's only one ring connecting the or three rings connected to the one, but it is what it is. Um, anyways, I'm going to continue to do or put your new ring together with three rings from the previous layer all the way across.
to make these rows even, we're going to take on our, on our last ring here on this row, we're going to take it and put it through these last two rings on the end. Now you have seven on top and two, four, six, seven on the second row. And they are even. Now for this next row, we will take the ring and instead of bending it forward like this, we're going to bend it backwards so that we can easily hook it through the other rings as we need. So for this third row we will take our ring that we have open and put it through the first two rings of the previous row. And then do the same to the next ring. Put it through the first three rings of the previous row, making sure that the rings you're putting on go behind the last ring you attached. That will keep the uh, weave looking good and not misfigured. So we want to get this all the way across. This is the weave I would recommend if you were wanting to do a full suit of armor because one, it looks nice when you've got a lot of it put together. And two, it won't take you near as long as some other patterns will. And it can, theoretically, if you're using the right materials, it can be used to actually protect yourself. But I don't recommend that. So if you go out and do something stupid and get hurt with it, don't blame me, because I'm not endorsing that. But, anywho, down to our last ring, again, only putting it through the last two rings from the previous rows, just like we did at the beginning of this row and at the end of the other row. So, now we have a piece of European 6-in-1 mail. And after a couple hours of working, you might end up with something of this size. This is using the exact same rings that I used in this tutorial, but it's just wider and thicker. So, as you can see, it looks nice, and if you could feel it, you'd know that it feels nice. You can use different ring sizes for this. Um, I have here some, uh, I think they're 12 gauge uh, half inch rings. And as you can see, it's pretty thick and not incredibly flexible. But 
If that's what you want, by all means, it also looks nice, but I prefer the smaller diameter and smaller uh, gauge ring. Um, if you liked what you saw, uh, go ahead and hit the like button there. And if you want more of this stuff, go ahead and follow me, or subscribe to me, that is, and check out my other videos. Uh, thank you for watching.